Hey everybody, Jack Clips Painting here with a new video, and I have a really, really old Plague Marine. Look at this guy. Original 1996 plastic Plague Marine, and we're going to do a start to finish paint. So you can see I got the eBay Rescue that's been stripped, and one that I've already painted to completion. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to take the guy from bare plastic to looking like the dude on the left there fully finished and painted up in a modern style on an old model first things first we got to prime this guy so i'm getting out my black steino res primer getting that all over the model in a nice thin coat as always want to make sure not to spray too hard in any one given area so that our primer does not pool up on the model nice and smooth all over all right for our death guard workup we're going to start with burnt sienna this is a nice brown rusty orange love this color and we're going to give this guy an undercoat and I literally mean like an undercoat, like we're getting all up in his business in that undercarriage, holding the model upside down, spraying it with the airbrush so that when we turn the model right side up, we're not going to be able to see very much of that orange, except in the underneath parts and in the deepest recesses of the detail. And we're going to layer paint on top of this so that it looks like our Death Guard green color has been chipped and weathered down to a nice rusty metal. All right, first color of our Death Guard green, I'm using dark camo green. Going pretty old school with these guys. So I wanna capture that original OG Death Guard style. Starting off with this dark camo green, and then we're gonna be working up into more desaturated green gray, and then just a regular warm gray, just to give us that look. And I have flipped the model right side up, and I have a high spray angle going. Wanna make sure that I'm not catching any of those underneath areas, and I'm spraying kind of lightly with the trigger there to make sure that I'm not blasting that green paint into those deep details so we can have some of that orange creep through and you can see now that we look at them if I kind of look at the underneath got that orange and if we look at it from the top got that green so this is setting up that really cool transition look between rusty color and paint All right, so we're gonna desaturate that color with some bright neutral gray. I'm just gonna take that and put a few drops right into the pot, stir it up. You can see the color we're getting. Nice desaturated camo green color with that gray. And now we're gonna focus really top down. Uh, one thing about these guys is that they are pretty smooth. They don't have the uh, tons of detail that the new guys do, but I love them. These, these old goofy looking plague greens, they're my favorite. Um, so I am making sure to have kind of a high spray angle and to focus on different parts of the model starting with this color to make sure that we do have some nice contrast between our darker colors and our lighter colors and that we're building up that cool modern gradient style of painting Warhammer, which um, I don't know, I guess you guys like it or you wouldn't watch my videos because that's like kind of my whole thing. I, I like this style, so hopefully you like it too. All right, last color in the Death Guard workup, bright, warm gray. Now this is sort of a neutral gray, but with a little bit of beige mixed in. You know, it's, it's on the warmer side of the spectrum. It's almost an off-white. And I'm just gonna go in and start pop highlighting certain areas like I would on any normal guy. You know, tops of the shoulder pad, top of the head, getting that backpack, hitting his big barrel belly chest, top of the knees, toes that kind of thing, you know, doing our doing our thing as per usual. Just wanting to make sure that I don't blast this out. I wanna take really aimed, precise passes with the airbrush to get those little pop highlights, making sure not to spray too much because when you get to this last pop color, if you go too heavy on the trigger, you'll just blow out all your colors because you're putting way too much paint on the model. We wanna be very minimalist with this. This is gonna create that very 
hyper real, hyper highlight, hyper contrast, whatever you want to call it. This is the step that really makes that stuff pop out. And he will seem a little uh, washed out and a little too gray at this step. But that's okay because we are going to put a wash on the model. We're going to be using our multi-black oil wash from Mr. Hobby to blend our highlights and shadows with a very smooth wash shade transition. So we do want to go a little bit brighter than the end result needs to be, just because it is going to get knocked down by that dark color filter. All right, now time to do some chipping. So I'm gonna grab that same burnt sienna that we used before, get me a little sponge, my tweezers there. I'm gonna dip that in the paint, dab most of that off on a paper towel so I leave just little chippies like you see me doing right here, just a little bit of paint. We don't wanna to do too much. And we're just gonna start hitting a lot of those areas around the edges and cracked portions of his armor where we want that paint to chip. And this is also going to be our sort of like hard transition from the burnt sienna that we sprayed with the airbrush in the undercoat onto these areas that we've painted before. And this is gonna help complete that look of more realistic paint chipping. And the way that I'm gonna be highlighting this is gonna go kind of hand in hand with the more old school style. So if you wanna go more realistic, you can skew that way or you can do what I do in this video, which is sort of more cartoony to kind of fit that, that OG Warhammer style. But it is going to help the color transition look a little bit more like the story that we want to tell. After that paint's dry, I'm gonna thin out some of that burnt sienna on my palette there and grab some with my brush. And I'm going to start lightly painting that into some of the details. And I'm also going to help flesh out some of those paint chips you can see on some of those areas where um, if they weren't really connecting to the edge of the armor or going past any like shoulder pad trim to really create the look, I'm gonna be drawing some of that burnt sienna in there. Also adding some uh, kind of runny streaks. You can do that if you want to. You don't have to, but I think it helps the look of the Death Guard have some of that like grime kind of streaking down their armor. This is also going to set us up for the detail wash later on because we're going to have some of that rust in all of his joints and details and kind of creeping out of every uh, bit of detail and orifice on the model just to help that paint chip degradated look. All right, now to start blocking in some details. I'm gonna start off with our bronze. Nice, rich, dark bronze for our Death Guard. You know, Death Guard green and bronze, you know, name me a better couple, dare you. I'm just gonna start hitting all the details. Luckily, the older Space Marines don't have nearly as much bronze trim as the new guys, so I definitely like that. It's a lot easier to to paint these guys than it is the newer ones. But I'm still gonna take my time, make sure all my detail is nice and clean, not gonna be sloppy. You know, if you're gonna spend a billion seconds, you might as well do a good job. So I'm just gonna cut in all the bronze detail. And sometimes on some of the shallower detail parts of this guy, I kinda just have to like freehand it and just draw in our own detail, so. Um, on the newer models, which you can use this whole color scheme for, like all the supplies to the new models as well. Um, it's gonna be a lot easier to do that stuff because the detail is a lot bolder and more crisp. But for these guys, you just kinda have to wing it.
Once I've cut in all the bronze, I'm going to switch over to some dark silver. It's going to be our steel and gunmetal color base coat for a lot of this stuff. And I'm going to lead off with the hoses and stuff. He's got these really nice like um, ribbed cables and hoses coming out of them. This is one of the reasons I like the older style of Death Guard. The sort of like gas mask and all of these like ribbed cables for their nasty like rebreathers and all that kind of stuff they got going on. And you can see them through like the cracked pieces of the armor. And I do also like the new models where they have more of the sort of like chaos warp taint type stuff going on. But something about these these old models, just like this is what I this is what got me into Warhammer. This is what I grew up looking at. All the all the artwork looked like these guys too, and I just loved every second of it. So this is a lot of nostalgia right here. After I've got all that detail cut in, I think the last thing I need to do is the little wood paneling on his bolter. So I'm just going to grab some dark golden brown or, you know, whatever brown suits you. I just grabbed the first one that I saw and just block in that little wood paneling there. Making sure to stay nice and thin so I don't uh, gum up the wood paneling texture that's on there because that detail is actually pretty nice even on this old model. So I want to make sure that stays intact and I can easily highlight it later on, just doing some nice thin passes. All right, with all of our base colors blocked in, we're gonna go to the wash and I'm pulling out the Mr. Weathering Color Multi Black and the solvent. You've seen me do this a million times before. I even have some specialized videos that go way more in depth in this, but the basic idea is you slather the model in the solvent, and that lubes them up, gets the surface all ready for the wash, and then we slam that wash on there, get it all over the model, and then we start using the solvent in our brush as an eraser and a blending tool. So I dip my brush in the solvent, touch that to a paper towel so I'm not flooding the model with the solvent thinner, and then very lightly brush off the multi-black and blend it out into the shadows and details as you see me doing right now so that way we get that really cool professional oil wash look without very much time or hassle. Now that wash is dry, all of our details are popping out, looking clean AF. Got that oil wash, smooth transition all over the model. Looking sick. He, I mean, he's table ready right now, but we got more work to do. I'm gonna grab some of this Pro Acryl Orange, AKA Agent Orange, I think it's still called. And I'm just gonna go in with my teeny tiny brush and do some detail chips with that bright orange to get that sort of Warhammer cartoon style, larger than life, color paint chipping details, this bright, almost fluorescent orange. It's really, really, really powerful. Just gonna go around a lot of the edges and details where we've already done our sponge chipping and create smaller chips inside of those and around lines and edges to accentuate our rusty bits and paint chips. Sick rhyme. Looking good there. Loving those paint chips. Going to very quickly detail highlight our little wood panel textures. I just mix some gray with that same brown. You know, you just want a lighter shade of brown or beige to highlight the wood stuff. Don't have very much paint in my brush, so I can use the side to just gently caress those details and scrape some paint onto the edges of that wood texture.
Next, I'm going to grab some bright pale green. This is going to be our color for the bronzy oxidation verdigris color. It's an optional step. You don't have to do this, but I think it does look pretty good. But you do want to make sure to very, very much thin this down. I had like barely a single drop of paint on the palette. Got a few brushfuls of water in there, so it's semi-transparent, has a lot of flow. And I'm just going to drop and streak that into some of the details around our bronze stuff, especially around the details of the trim and any big bolts or rivets we might have. Last thing is to do his little eye lens slits. I'm gonna grab some of this bright yellow green, great toxic death guard color, and just very carefully get that into those little those little eye slits. I mean, like there is barely enough room for this little baby brush to get in there. They're real small, so I'm not gonna be doing any glow effects or or lenses anything. This is gonna pop all on its own. If you can even see the eyes when he's on the table under that huge brow. But I wanted to do it just because up close it looks really cool. And that's just about it. He's done. Um, this guy is looking super, super cool. Really happy with how he came out. Um, just grabbed like a random city fight base, slapped that together and put him on there. Just so he could be displayed on a base, fully finished model. And uh, like I said earlier, you can use this color scheme and these same techniques for modern day Death Guard models and do a whole army this way and it's going to look sick. But uh, I just got a couple of these guys and felt the nostalgia, wanted to have some fun and do sort of a half and half eBay rescue and old model, old hammer makeover with some new painting techniques to just breathe new life into these guys. So I'm really happy with how it came out. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll catch you next time.